In this this wow. section of the podcast, mate, it's the artist corner. This is like, Strawn, here's the microphone, and we're going to turn it all over to you. What do you want to leave our audience with today? Anything that kind of pops out? No pressure, man. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, just, just no pressure, right? Just, like... <laughs> just change the world with what you say next. That's all. And if you and if you cry, <laughs> we might go with you. It's called a, We call them spiritual punches here, so don't worry about that either. Okay, here's to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, I, I don't know, man. I think... Um, if I, you know, what's on my heart at the moment is we're obviously living in, in really unique times and I don't, I don't know who's listening and whether you're predominantly artists, I imagine you're predominantly artists or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a more important time to, um, to connect with the transcendent, the confusing, the, mm. the unknown elements of God. And, and of course God is so, so knowable and so achievable, but, I'm not sure that what the world needs is better solutions. I think what the world needs is better lovers. And I think that anybody can become a better lover um, by simply just getting down on their knees more often or just simply sitting in the dark with a lit candle or just waking up 10 minutes earlier or just learning to say, God, good morning or good evening. And I think that, I think that we, in the complication, the complicated world we live in and the uncertain world we live in, there's never been a greater time for love. And I just encourage you as artists or as people, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, friends, whatever, um, man, never underestimate the power and creativity of um, of God, of, of knowing him, of walking with him, um, especially now. It's never yeah. been more important. So, Yeah, man. Um, one of the things that's been on my mind this year and – and it's amazing how the things that we feel, you know, dare we say, might be from the Lord, can so easily just leave our field of vision, you know? And like like the the most profound things that we encounter in life are often the hardest things to recall. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I was struck with this with this idea this year. Um and for years I've put even into, into these songs that we've been talking about a lot of, a lot of that classic psalmist idea of like, how long a Lord, how long will you stay silent? You know, when will you, when will you speak? When will you show me, you know, the, we were always looking for signs and, and that's natural. That's normal for humans to want our heavenly father, our real father to sort of interact with us. You know what I mean? Um, and then I had this thought this year, um, because we were all forced into um, a type of silence, whether that was comfortable for us or not. Um, and and ironically, as we we're for- all forced in this quarantine, the world got louder and louder and louder and messier. Obviously, as Americans, the politics has just been insane you know it's just been it's just been out out of control i think is the best way to put it sure. um the the political rhetoric and and noise in this country and and i had this thought recently like i thank god often for his silence mm, yeah when we're just making such a freaking noise like down here yeah. you know and he's just silent like if we can sit with that for a moment and 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 just settle our our souls for a moment like i think that we'll find that his his silence isn't inaction yeah it's not apathy somehow it's 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 actually it's actually the very healing thing that we need in the midst of our noise so yeah. that's that's even new to me Whoa. i've always been like a contemplative type where I, I love being alone almost to a fault. Um, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm appreciating God's kind of quiet, his quiet more than ever before. And maybe, maybe that's something that we're all being shown. Okay. Let me just start with this story. Everybody, I just want you to pay attention to this. My chi- my child, he ended up hurting his finger the, um, a couple of months ago and he was just so upset. We were at the park and he wanted to play, but he didn't, 
He had a hurt finger. It ru- it, it felt like he, his whole day was ruined to him. And I was just looking. I was like, man, that thing's going to heal up. You're going to be all right, you know, from a father perspective. And so it, it, God spoke to me, and he was like, I'm just like that with you, son. Mm. And I was like, when I'm going through trials, when I'm going through situations, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's going to be healed, what's the purpose behind all of this, but God knows, and he's in control. And so when I when I was just knowing that everything was going to be okay with my son— and, and, and he was going through a really rough time. God was telling me when I'm going through a rough time, when you're going through a rough time, that he know he, he has you right in his hands, right where you need to be. And he, he ain't going to put too much on you that you can't bear. Hmm. And so um, if you're if you're listening to this right now and you're watching this, man, just know that, you know, through trials and tribulations, all things work together for the good of those who love God. Amen. Amen. And, and and he even says, count it joy in your trials and tribulations. When we just count it joy in our trials and tribulations, we're, we're stepping back and we're looking from God's perspective. And we're just like, Lord, I just trust you no matter what's going on. And I'm just going to praise you through this storm. And when we just put on a garment of praise when we're going through those trials and tribulations and we just fight through that 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 enemy saying you you're not worthy to even pray to God, stay away from him. That's when you need to cling to God the most and just say, Jesus, I don't have it all together, but I trust you right now. So I just believe that's something for somebody that's watching this right now. I think two things, and I realize this concept of re-enchantment gets a little bit heady, and I've been really trying to dig in and ask myself, like, how do I make this more palatable? You know, and I I think I'm using two terms. I'm using one is dreams, the other is story, Hmm. right? A dream is a story you tell yourself about what the future is going to look like, you know, and you don't have control over that future, but you do have the opportunity to choose which story you're going to fellowship with about that future. And if you choose certain stories, I think the future is going to be better. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm just you know, there's a lot of people sitting around trying to figure out what they're going to do with their lives post covid everyone's real excited about like being able to go outside again, be with people again. But also I think there's going to be, it's going to be hard on a lot of people too. It's going to be hard to go back to work. It's going to be hard to go back to school, you know? And so like, I, I just hope that I can help people um, tell the right kind of stories or engage with the right kind of stories. I want people to know, like, you know what I'm saying? If, if you feel like right now, the you feel like the enemy is just attacking you. You know what I'm saying? You feel like almost you can't catch a break, kind of kind of vibe. It's like that's that should let you know that like God's hand is on your life. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. enemy always attacks the people that you know what I'm saying God's hand is on, and you know what I'm saying he knows God is gonna do big things for God. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna do big things in their life. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I think they say you know what I'm saying the scripture all things work together for the good. Those that love him are called according to his purposes. And they think, they think, I feel like people think that means like, oh, everything's good. Like it's all good. And it's like, nah, yeah. like it's not all good sometimes, but it's going to get good. And that's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That yeah. is the the promise. That is something that you can hold on. of like, we just got to, you know what I'm saying? We got to get to that part. We got to get to the good part. You know what I'm saying? And that good part is coming. Um, and so, yeah, for anybody out there, it's just like, just know like the good part. The good part is coming, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, a year from now, whether it's a month from now, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's, it's coming. So Dude, um, well that's something that I'm holding on to right now. Something that God's been speaking over and over to me, and I really believe that it's something for all of us in this season, and it's so simple, but it's just been really profound. And it's something that I, I was sitting just on the floor, actually, in prayer, just kind of found a spot and was sitting in my house where it was quiet. And... And, you know, I just was asking the Lord, I'm like, okay, I'm here. Please just speak to me. I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. And he spoke so clearly to me, like, I'm still here. Mm. I'm still here. And I think in all of the crazy of the last year and all of the, everything has been disrupted and discombobulated and just plain weird at times. And it's easy for us to forget 
and easy for us to ask, God, where are you? Like, what are you doing in this? Why haven't you stopped this? Why haven't you rescued us from this? Why all of these things? And it was, you know, and I have so many questions in my own personal life and in our, you know, what's going on in our lives right now that it's like, what are you doing and why are you doing this? Yeah. And are you going <laughs> to going to fix this? Like, yeah. do you see this? <laughs> yeah. And, and he just constantly reminds me, I'm still here. I am with you. Zach's corner. What do I want to challenge you with? Um, I, I, you know, the, the thing that pops into my head right now is this is the spirit of competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like in, in the music business, in the arts business, we're, we're constantly competing for viewers. We're constantly competing for ears. We're constantly competing for bandwidth and platforms. And I just want to encourage you that, um, first of all, nobody can compete with you, uh, when it comes to being you, you're, yeah. you're an absolute individual created by Christ. And, uh, and the, 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 when you're at your best, you are reflecting an aspect of Jesus that no one else on the face of the earth reflects. Mm-hmm. So you be the Jesus that, that he has put inside of you because the world needs to see that Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is this, I would love for people to be a little more competitive about souls and a little less competitive about downloads and things like that, mm-hmm. because our, our time is coming. You know, I don't know if it's tomorrow, but I know that tomorrow it's closer than it was today closer than it was yesterday feels a lot like things are wrapping up and if things are wrapping up then we have to be about kingdom business and uh and sometimes that means i am on a platform sometimes that means i'm making money um but what that really means is that i am i am making jesus known and helping people to fall in love with him right the reason that we see this the this devastating story is like what we just saw with ravi zacharias Mm -hmm. um When I compare that to Luis Palau, where, where I know that will never come out, <laughs> nothing like that would come out around Luis, is that there are some very big differences. And I think that this is what we as Christians should be striving for. Luis's sophistication flowed out of the simplicity of the gospel. Hmm. When I listen to Ravi Zacharias, I would often think to myself, what a great mind. Hmm. Whenever I listened or spent time with Luis Palau, what I would walk away with was, what a great Jesus. Oh, and I man. think that that's, that, that speaks to, that just speaks to the, the power of the gospel. And it was like, he wasn't a guy that was like using the fanciest arguments. What he was a guy is that when you talked with him or you heard him speak, you believed that he believed what he was saying, yeah. which I think is really crucial and often missing in the church. Yeah. And you believe that he really loved Jesus and that Jesus really loves you, the listener. And it's like, and so I just think that, we have got to come back to the simplicity of the gospel. We've got to, we've got to quit giving ourselves over to these endless, you know, self-help fads, yeah. which to me create ladders that exhaust us. And and that's not what the church is for. Jesus is the ladder, mm. <laughs> according to John, <laughs> according yeah. to the close of chapter one. So so I just say, hey, the world will always do the world better. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just <laughs> this little Jesus says, "Come die with me," and it's like and. And then he's going to bring us alive. And he says, and I will give you life and life abundantly. Well, I guess sort of like what we were talking about earlier about having to remind yourself of the gospel, like what you were saying about how grace is so counterintuitive. And I think we need to keep hearing the gospel again and again and again and reminding ourselves of the gospel. (laughs) And I know as a mom, I need to hear it every day. And as a wife, I need to hear it every day. And I guess, um, yeah, I, I think... I've really been enjoying reading the Psalms lately because I feel I feel like they just have the whole array of human emotions that you go through. And um, I think for me at the moment, I'm finding, yeah, motherhood and work and just things challenging and trying to like hold all that intention and serve Jesus and love Jesus and love my neighbor. And what does that look like? And how do I do that practically? And how do I have quiet time with Jesus every day? And still do music. And so, um, I guess the last few weeks for me have been, I've just been contemplating all those things, but like we were talking about earlier, just reminding myself every day of the gospel and actually Jesus loves me as an imperfect mother, as an imperfect wife. Mm. I don't have to prove myself to him. I I would just say, you know, something that I'm applying to, uh, our worship team as we, as we build a new culture here for little kids, 
for young adults, for the, everybody involved in worship as a whole, uh, corporately. I'm really adopting Colossians 3.23, and that, that scripture says, do everything like you're doing it for God, right? Mm-hmm. And I just feel like if, if people who uh, do know God could, could think of that verse every morning, how, how much better would your life, would your worship, would your marriage, would your work, would your volunteering, would your everything be? So um, I guess that's what I would share. Ah, man, so many things. Um, probably overall, I would say there's a lot of pressure being put on Christianity right now. We are not well liked in the culture. Um, and some some of it is sort of the chickens coming home to roost sort of thing. Like we may have earned some of this pushback. And some of it I think is unfair and unwarranted where, you know, there's just an unrealistic expectation of fallen people all gathered together. You know, mm-hmm. people expect us to be something that we've never claimed. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, I think that's showing up everywhere in the political realm, social justice or injustice realm, theological realm, um, all the above. There's a lot of pressure being put on Christianity to invalidate Jesus and what um, he contributed to the world for, for all of our salvation, for our joy in our human experience. I just, man, I just, I just want to say to the church, um, I just pray that we can be humble to hear helpful critique yeah. and, um, but that we would also hold fast to the gospel and yeah. our claim of truth. Because if you overthrow Christianity, I understand the world thinks that this place will be better, yeah. but I think they don't really realize what they'll be losing without Christianity, its contribution, to humanity if it's completely removed from the picture. Mm. So we have to sort of love the world by fighting for our place in the world Mm. and to maintain um, our vigor, to proclaim love, grace, and forgiveness, um, but at the same time, uh, being on the ground, serving our neighbor, showing them that we don't just care about souls, but we also care about your human experience. So we can keep those two things as friends, our passion to serve people and our passion for truth I think we can potentially show why Christianity is a good contribution to the, to humanity versus something that they need to remove forever. So I hope the church can feel those things on an emotional level, on an intellectual level, and we can, uh, yeah, be here for the long haul in American culture. I would just say, you guys, uh, stay positive. Stay, um, I th- one thing that I've seen through all of this, this uh, political crazy movement is the just lack of love you know Mm -hmm. and people people justify um having their strong opinions and being rude for telling people the truth and they're loving them by telling the truth and people are lacking love all over the place and so i remember that to love your enemies love the left love whatever side of political that you're against you love them you love them we don't belittle them yeah you know what i'm saying yeah and so i just i I want people to remember that because they're going to regret it one day if they walk in this throughout their lives you know it's not about left and right it's about love and christ died for all of those people that you're against so i've lived um at this residence where my studio is uh here in south dakota for about 10 years and at the end of my driveway uh there's always it's been there it's a annual or Peren- whatever yeah. the flower Perennial. that comes back every yeah, year. Perennial. Okay. Yep. 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 And so every year it would pop up at the end of my driveway and it wasn't like even planted in a good place. It's honestly just kind of awkwardly <laughs> planted. And, uh, it's just one, one single plant by itself. And there were so many times that I was like, I should just cut that thing down or get rid of it, dig it out, whatever. Um, because it was just like kind of in the way. Um, anyway, so Two years ago, a year ago, whatever, um, I was going to walk into the grocery store or something, and I was on my phone, and something uh, something caught the corner of my eye. I look over, and here's this plant that had been there for like 10 years wow. that I had never seen really do anything. Um, it was fully blossomed, and um, it was uh, a peony. 
Yeah. And I don't know if you know anything about peonies, yeah. but um, or if you have them in Florida, but peonies yeah. like spring up and there's just a stock for majority of the year, but the the flower itself will only bloom for like three or four days, yeah. and then it Beautiful. falls apart and then dies. Yep. yep. Yeah. And so I was like. I ran back in my house. I got my camera. I took a bunch of pictures of it because I was like, this is amazing. Like, I've never seen this thing <laughs> ten do <years>. anything. <laughs> yep, 10 years. And so a couple days later, I go out um, of my house again, and I'm just, like, walking around the block or something. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go look at my peonies. <laughs> and I go over there, and they're just dead. They're gone. Like, all the petals oh, no. are <laughs> falling off and everything. And I, I was, like, almost kind of mad because I was like, what is the point of a flower that – is here for just a few days and, and then it's gone, yeah, you know? Right. And I had this like weird epiphany and I was like, Oh, well that's what makes it so precious is the fact that we only get a short amount of time yeah. to enjoy it, uh, take it in and experience it before it's gone. And so it kind of like, that just sent me down like the spiral of like, that's what's lo- that's what life is like. <laughs> we get like this short amount of time here. Yeah you know, to make the best out, to experience it, um, to enjoy the beauty of it before it's gone. You have to enjoy it while it's there um, because you only get a short um, amount of time. 